Welcome back everybody, this is Johnny Torres and you tuned in to Hot on the Block, We Go Radio. Alright everybody, um, thank you for listening in and uh, joining us is celebrity publicist, Sonia Profe, and uh, also joining us from LA is uh, director, um, who's painting pictures right now, uh, has uh, some words out there for the public that you're very probably very familiar with. And uh, uh, Casey Amos, uh, thank you for joining us, and it's a privilege having you. Oh, it's a pleasure being here with you. And right. it's a pleasure likewise. I'm just guest hosting, um, celebrity guest hosting with Johnny today. And I actually represent um, Mr. Amos, but uh, this may be the only chance I ever get to interview him. That's why I told Johnny today, because things are getting really busy and taking off. So... Um, Johnny, go ahead. I just wanted to say Happy New Year to everybody, and thank you for supporting Colorwin, supporting LP during the holidays, and hopefully you went out to the Red Box and got his movie, Mercy for Angels, like I asked everybody to do. <laughs> and, um, go ahead, Johnny. You got some questions for him? Yeah, yeah. Um, Casey, you know, for... You know, people are very familiar with your works, and they're getting familiar with your works. Um, why don't you let us know? You know, before we get into your into your your works on your creative side and your career, can you tell us who is Casey Amos? I mean, I come from the San Fernando Valley. You know, I'm just an average guy that was with a creative slant. You know, so I I kind of figured out that I was lean more towards the artistic side of things pretty early on in life and, and decided, you know, that I was going to get into photography and heavily in high school. And then, you know, that, that inspired me to continue on and go go over into into film school and, and uh, where I went to live action at the Californians to the Arts. But I, I, think it, I think the seed was planted very early on when I was, you know, on, on the set of Roots at the age of like three and four and, and seeing, seeing the impact that, that my father's work had on on people and in, in different parts of the, the world once it once it aired and once I saw that at, at a young age I, I told myself you know at some point I got I got to be part of this it was just a matter of time. Well, I have a question for you, Mr. Amos. Um, I was wondering, you know, as a, a child celebrity star of a legend. Um, not just the pressure, but I want to hear the good parts. You know, we always hear those depressing stories like Drew Barrymore and, and the problems. But to me, it seemed like it was a good experience from you, from what I've heard you say. And I would really like to hear your take on being a child of um, the, the father, the first black father of television, you know, before Cosby. And um, his name is John Amos, everybody, and he was um, Kunta Kinte on Roots. And this is John Amos's dad, and I would just like to hear uh, a little bit how it was growing up under a legend of such, and, and in such an era, and the 70s was, I'm a 70s baby, I was born in 1970, and so, I'm not supposed to be telling my age now, but I just did. Um, I really, you know, respect your dad, and the show, I never get, we're tired of, and I just love it. So, could you tell me what it was like? Oh, there was there was a lot of a lot of great great experiences growing up with my dad. Uh, he was he was so down to earth, and so you didn't you didn't really get the whole like you know we never stayed you know we lived never lived like a block away from Sunset Boulevard. You know we lived, always lived in rural areas, a little bit away from L.A. You know with with you know he, he was into horses and we had we had horse property, but it, it was such a such wow. a natural upbringing, you know that that he, you know he kept he kept it real with us, and and you know but there was a lot of fun fun little benefits that went with it you know when i took my buddies to go see et you know he's like you know on the first night he like we you know he's like well let's bust the amos you know that's what he would say when he you know let's bust the face you know when he when he don't show his face and we got to the front of the line and then we ended up sitting next to the fonz but he you know he was like really yeah he's like don't you kids say you know don't you kids say nothing you know what i mean because everybody's here just enjoy the movie so we had to sit there you know with our <laughs> yeah, next, not, not trying to look at him, you know, but we, you yeah. know, little little moments like that stood out. But he was so down there, we didn't get the real big Hollywood treatment, you know. It, it was, it just felt like a regular pops, really, with me. 
Okay. Um, I have one other question. Um, you know, um, being that moving in, I, I understand you two have worked together on some projects, um, the Watermelon Heist, and I know you did the um, this recent one on Redbox, Mercy for Angels. Johnny, you had a question about Mercy for Angels, didn't you? I think yeah, you wanted to know what the story was like, right? Okay. Yeah, can you <laughs> I can't hear you, Johnny. Okay, well, I'll take care of this. Um, so basically, um, you uh, you have this movie on um, Redbox Distribution right now, and um, you you co did it, you co directed it with Mr. Stelly. Yeah, Dale Stelly, my partner Dale Stelly, we co directed the film together. Correct, and I never get to hear you speak about Dan Stelly. Um, I wanted to know a little bit about um, Dan Stelly and you guys' relationship and how you guys came together to co-direct this beautiful um, storyline together. Yeah, we've been working together for a number of years, and we, we met over at the Universal lot, and it was one of those situations where, you know, we, we, were, we were doing, you know, we were working on various projects, and we realized at night after everybody went home, we were still working, and we were the only ones putting in the work. We, you know, there's a lot of jobs in the business where you can, you can get through by, by you know, making, making you know, middlemen and meeting people. But, we, you know, I said, well, you're working on this, and, and, and I got this going. And, like, if we put our two heads together, we could really, really make some things happen. And so, you know, we, we set out a goal to... Uh, Go out and make a couple pictures like that night when we realized we were the really ones, really ones putting in the work at, you know, staying all night and everything at the studio. So within a year or two later, you know, we, we had come up with, uh, Mercy for Angels and, and the next one coming up is a uh, Tamales and Gumbo. And, you know, they're, they're catered towards, uh, you know, the, the urban market as far as people that are looking for that next film to see after straight out of Compton. You know, this is one little romantic comedy, Tamales and Gumbo that you can kick back and, and, and and watch with your girlfriend and, and, and don't worry about too many guns blasting off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about um Tamales and Gumbo, the storyline for this one. Um oh, and, and the actress, the beautiful Latina actress that um you have starring in both Mercy for Angel and this one. Could you give give us a little rundown about her, her name and, and where she came from, um, in her background with acting and stuff. Because we want to oh, get Vita, her in here yeah. for an interview as well. Oh, definitely. Vita, Vita Gear is an impeccable actor. She's a perfectionist. She, You know, when she comes to set, she knows, like, all her lines, you know. And, and you know, she she actually uh, uh, originally comes from Cuba, and, and she's had great success here in the States as, as a model. And now she started to cross over, and she, she did the National Lampoon's film Dorm Days, and she recently... Uh, after doing our film, she did the film uh, Chips, you know, with, with the two cops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them. You know, uh-huh. they're bringing that back. That should be out in about nine months. So, you know, she working with us, she's been able to get her chops up. And, and she you know, she's she's grown over the years to where now, you know, I, I think she's going to be, you're going to see her in some A-list films and consider yeah, some, she, some she's got serious. something you know i liked her in the gumbo movie and uh she knows she reminds me of um what's the alba jessica alba she looks like jessica alba and uh she reminds me of jessica, jessica alba so much <laughs> um the other question is you know you know, you being under the name Amos, have you have any challenges trying to get, you know, yourself established and your credibility in Hollywood? No, I mean, on the contrary, I mean, it, you know, you, you it's such a challenging business and it's so competitive. I mean, you use what you can to get your foot in the door, and that's, that's only get your foot in the door, and then after that, you pretty much have to prove yourself and and make your way and make your own stand. So, I mean, I, I don't think, I, I think it's been more of a benefit, you know, having my father having some, somewhat, you know, uh, uh, clear some of the path, some of the brush out of the pathway. So when, by the time I come through, there's, there's a little less uh, brush to clear, but, uh, you know, it's, like it's a mentor. A As a, you have yeah. a, you have a family yeah. mentor. That's absolutely That's cool. cool. Did you want to ask him anything, Johnny? Um, okay. Johnny, you yeah. there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Um, yeah, you think you're I, finished, or? <laughs> no, great. And, uh, um, KC, let's say for, you know, uh, guys that are, guys or women, um, that want to be in the business, um, that want to be in entertainment, 
What advice would you give him? Well, I would say, you know, start, start practicing your craft and really hone in on it is what you want to do. And, you know, no, no, you don't have to start off shooting shooting an hour and a half feature or anything like that. This is, there's a lot to be said in, in, in one and two minutes now with all the different mediums coming out and people needing content on their phones while they're sitting in the airport or, or they need they, they got some time to fill. I mean, I'm, I'm steadily through the day looking for different media content to just just kind of watch and, and keep entertained or, or you know learn some history or whatever so you tell a quick little story so you know i've been working with these little insta shorts where there's 15 <laughs> seconds so you wrap your mind around that and you know you figure you make you make 30 insta shorts and you got you got a amazing little short so i would just you know for, for young cats out there i would i would be grateful for all the new platforms that are out there because they weren't there 10 years ago and that you can get your stuff out there it's just about hyping in and make you know you're gonna have to be better than 10 times better than everybody else out here because a lot of people doing it so that's pretty much it it's just like you know look at all the new formats that are out there and 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 grow and build and practice your craft and do a little bit every every day every week you know and and and, and believe me if it's a six months or nine months stay doing consistent that, gonna, and on the grind right <laughs> exactly you're gonna progress Wow, that's, you know, that's, that's KT. I mean, you know, he's had such a, a bubbly spirit and, and always so enthusiastic and positive. And that's what the world needs more of, especially in the entertainment business. Um, and Mr. Mr. Amos, I, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, so in the next, uh, year, I mean, uh, next three years, where do you see yourself? What goals have you set for yourself? And where do you see yourself in three years mm -hmm. from now? Well, my first goal when I set out to become an independent filmmaker, I figured the, the true definition of an independent filmmaker is that he didn't have to really ask anybody for permission to shoot anything specifically the way that they wanted it due to financial or business circumstances. So I wanted to be set up in three years in a way to where I'll just be able to paint pictures fluidly and let the cameras kind of let let the cameras lead the way as far as the stories that need to be developed and and I think uh, I think that'll be a more natural way to create honest filmmaking rather than you know set out to make yeah. X amount of dollars before you even shoot the idea. You're you, you know. right. I love that because, you know, I was talking to Shaniqua West just today and she said, well, what do you think I can do for her and this, this and that or, you know, how could we collaborate and be together? And you know what I told her? I said, first, the spirit got to come in and God got to bring these opportunities to me for you and he has to lay a table out for you to for me to give you and and that's just how i work you know i work the same way it, it's it's creative it's spiritual and it, and it and it and it has to take on a life as its own and it's just god-given it's just a god-given talent that we we all have johnny has you have i have and and sometimes we you know some people take their talent and don't know what to do with it. Some people let, you know, the devil and money control it. But, um, you, you know, you have a good balance and a good chemistry with what you do. And I see nothing but success for you. Um, being your, your publicist and management. And I, I just think that the world is going to be so much better and blessed once they start getting a taste of your films on a worldwide level, you know, a movement. A movement. Um, um, Johnny? I mean, I, you know, I, again, I want to extend uh, my appreciation for, for your time. Uh, Casey, what would you like to let the people know about you that they don't already know? Um, you know, I just think they need to know that I, this is the main reason I was put here on this earth was to bring people together through my craft and you know, different diversities, you know, I'm, um, I come from a mixed background, you know, my mom got, has blonde hair, blue eyes, and my dad, John Amos, he's obviously black, you know, and, and I, I'm this person <laughs> that comes in be in between, you know, and, and mills, mills in between, you know, I, I can, you know, people ask me what kind of music, and I like everything from Sebastian Bach to Tupac, you know, I, I can, when I can meet with a Suge Knight, you know, uh, up at his, up at his domain, up in Mule Creek State Prison, and chop it up about the most recent hip hop video, and then and then in the same day, be back and chop it up 
with the highest executives over a corporate situation in suits and ties and, and, and speak between both languages. So that's my goal is to weave in between and, and create a tapestry of work that basically brings the world together and, and allows people to see the world in a way they would have never thought they would have been able to see it before. You you want to bridge the gap. You want to bridge the gap, bring break, break down the barriers and the walls of the color line. And, and that's just so beautiful. And you just remind me of one last part. I was telling Johnny about your background, that you had did um, some production work, um, some documentary work, and that IC was involved. Tell us about that and that you do music videos. And could you tell us about who was in the videos and stuff before we you know get off the line oh sure i came in the music videos and in in pretty much when it was at the peak in the heyday around 96 97 and i had the pleasure of working with being around some great artists like tupac and snoop dogg and, and got to shoot a breakout video called we could freak it for corrupt in the dog pound where, where everybody showed up and ice t was in that and, and did a cameo we went on to uh, a year or two later to, to do a straight straight from the projects with a series on dvd that's out there and he was the narrator on that and you know we kind of built a, a rapport and it's been interesting watching you know the, the urban landscape that, that started off with music videos developing the documentaries and now they're all looking to do feature films and we're all all of us are, are in the urban landscape are growing as artists and it's kind of still a beautiful time to, to watch it develop you know and now you know the, 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 the rapper's kids are coming up and that, now they're making the rap song so it's really it's is there anyone that we should watch out for that that you um like I mean, Mac Mac can surprise me. His his kid just came up with a track. You know, we should be doing a yeah. video on him soon. And uh, it's, a, it's a couple few out there. You know, I, I don't want to say anything before before they're ready to drop anything. Right, 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 right. Well, I'm an A and R. Yeah. <laughs> So. I'm an A&R with Ingrid Fontana Universal, and, and I'm a shout-out, too, because I shouted her out earlier on mine, is uh, Tiffany Gaines out there in L.A. with Blasi Entertainment, and she uh, she has um, Dr. Dre son, Curtis Young, under, under management, and she's doing some wonderful things with him. And, um, you know, he's doing it independently without the help of his dad, so I really recommend, I really commend these kids, you know? I, I really, you know, I think that they have a lot of heart and, you know, I like the way they're trying to go about it on their own and, and really pave the way, you know? Um, tell me about this music video you um, you did with Lil Wayne. Oh, so sharp. That was, a, that was the last time and it may be the very last time that Malibu got turned out by a music video. Over 100 people showed up down there. Is that, you know, we didn't we didn't call that many. We just had cast a crew about 30 or 40 and, and we built a life guard tower down there and, and rick ross had a verse in there and lil wayne had a verse in there it was mac 10's song and it was called so oh, okay Shark. okay yeah. nice. and, and, and that that one that one that one got a lot of airplay that was on, on top of bt's with us for, for most of the summer and uh it went really well down there and it's, it's rare when you get that many artists together and and get to have a good time and really really uh make a cinematic situation right on the beach that doesn't happen very often but that was a beautiful moment so I understand t- um, Tomas and uh, Gumbo that Mac Tens in that as well. So he's a good friend of yours, I take it. Oh yeah, he lives nearby and stops by. I give him a hard time because he's the only friend. I, I said, man, you got the call. You got the call before you just come rounding on my door. Like, man, you know I'm just like rolling, one. man. I, I'm not gonna do all that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell Mac Tens like call before you come. <laughs> my cousin he's in the hall of fame for his van suffocation he says the same thing to me he's 10 minutes away and do you know i only showed up one time and, and announced and got greeted by him and his damien dog <laughs> in the backyard <laughs> so i didn't try that again because the dog might have been loose next time <laughs> and so um no i'm just kidding but um Johnny, anything anything else? Oh, there is one question, last question. Who would you want to work with in the future? Who could you just give me a name a two give me the give me two names of two two actors that you want to direct in the future? I would love I, would, I think I would love to work with Common, you know, he he just got has this dynamic range and depth, you know, and mysteriousness about him and, and on the comedic yeah. side comedic side i'd love to work with anthony anderson you know i i, I, know, I watched while he was working on a show with, with my father and, and he has similar chops to my father so i feel like i you know and i've worked with my father for years so i feel like instinctively i'd I know 
different planes that, that I could take him down emotionally, and, and that that would be that would be something that that would be interesting. Really? Be work, working like working with the next generation. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. Um, Johnny, you got anything else to add and anything, comments you want to say? Hey, I, I just would like to ask you, Casey, um, what one word would best describe you? Wow, it's just hard to pick one. I mean, creative is ob- so obvious, but I, I think I, I think <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna go with two and say exquisitely abstract. <laughs> Exquisitely abstract. All right. <laughs> I like that. That's very uh, cutting edge. Hey, I, snuck, and, I know I snuck two in there, but and it was I tough just <laughs> So, uh, anything else, Johnny? Because I know I took up most of the interview. I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to be a guest host, and I kind of <laughs> took the ball and ran with it. But, uh,. It's been a while. I've been on my radio. I love radio. And, you know, I want to thank Johnny, first of all, for letting me come on the air tonight and and help him conduct this interview. And I, I just want to let you know that I am the celebrity publicist, PR management for Casey Amos right now. And that you can hit me up on LP Media Conglomerate at gmail.com with any offers, um, any submissions, anything that you want him to look at, um, that you want him to be a part of. And um, if you have an offer, put that in there. He directs, he acts, he produces, um, he does screenwriting. And, uh, hey, he'll do some modeling too, whatever it takes. We got this, and uh, music videos, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we are looking for work at all day, every day, because that's what we do create. He creates at Color Wind Productions. He's always working, and LP, the same. We're on the grind, and same thing with Johnny Torres. We're, we're out here, and if you want to um, book an interview with Johnny, you know, and you know me, contact me. I'll put you in touch with Johnny, vice versa. And we're just out here to win it right now. This is the Happy New Year. This is Tanya Prophet. I'm out. Okay. Johnny? Yes. John? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I just want to know what time we're going to...